Jim, talking about some other state actors in the Middle East, do you think that Syria, Yemen, Libya, and Iraq remain as states? And if not, what do they look like in the future? Uh, well, they're... Syria is a, a I call them poodles, uh, because uh, someone, I forget, um, back in Britain in the early uh, 20th century during a constitutional crisis in which the, the uh, House of uh, Lords was trying to get a more prominent uh, position and, and failed, said that the House of Lords is uh, not a guardian of the Constitution. The House of Lords is Mr. Balfour's poodle. And uh, well, I think of the, uh, the Houthis, for example, in Yemen as, as Iran's poodle. Uh, for that part of the peninsula. And uh, they are going to continue in that role. Iran basically uh, runs them, gives them money, gives them uh, uh, Scud missiles. Um, the Houthis are shooting uh, relatively long-range ballistic missiles, Scuds, uh, into Saudi Arabia, killed a Saudi general the other day. Um, so there's a, a very, uh, very um, substantial uh, degree of control by uh, Iran of all those countries that Libya is so chaotic it's the Lord to tell who controls anything but but uh, uh, I would say that um, Iran uh, is doing its very best to extend its its empire and the you know, ISIS on the Sunni side of things is doing the same thing uh, and they're in a little bit of a race to see who can dominate more neighboring states quicker. Uh, it's not a race that the people of the Middle East uh, uh, are benefited by, uh, but I think that's what's going on and where it's going to end up. Lord knows. <laughs>